The day finally comes. Herds and herders are on the move. It's Bat Buyer's family that will cross the mountains first. To delay would mean putting the children, especially Del Gilmoron, at risk to snowstorms and freezing weather conditions. It's finally started. The migration is on us today, and uh, so many people have rocked up to help. All the extended family from Gares, miles around, are all here. It seems chaotic, but it isn't. Everyone knows what they're doing, and everyone has their place, and they just seem to be getting on with it with hardly a word spoken. In a flurry of activity, the Gares come down. Banzerich's sister in law is coming too. Unable to ride a horse, she will sit out the 120-kilometre journey on the back of an ox dray. As for the children, they're packed in crates aboard the yaks. It's going to be an uncomfortable journey. Finally, without any great ceremony, we're off. It's great to be moving at last. But we've got three days ahead of us, and I don't know what the weather's got in store. And when we get over those mountains, anything could happen, I suppose. But right now, it's just brilliant. In the land where the horse is king, they lead the way. Then there's the oxen and the yaks making up the baggage train with its precious cargoes. And bunched together behind, the sheep and goats make up the rear. The animals all seem to know the way across the mountains. They ought to. They do it every year. This big self perpetuating organic mass is just on the move, and all you have to do is tap it occasionally on left and right, and other than that, it just goes in a straight line. It's really lovely to see. After a five hour journey, we stop for camp. I'm beginning to see that nomadism isn't just about endless horizons, total freedom, and random movement. It's more a series of carefully planned and finite journeys, leaving nothing to chance. 